Piper as our solo. Slark is going to be grabbed by GT, and it's a pretty common pickup, though um, I'm not too convinced about it because we do have a couple of AoE stuns, Avalanche, as well as a Centaur's Hoof Stomp, uh, that can be a little bit disruptive for Slark. But uh, Slark is, uh, you know, in general, a pretty, pretty valued carry right now, I would say, in the Chinese scene. Don't see him nearly as much in the Western scene, um, but Slark still has a lot of value. He's a good, strong, mid-game team fighter, snowballing hero, and also gives you a lot of late-game possibilities. Uh, not necessarily more late-game viability than a Tiny, that's for sure, uh, especially a Tiny Wiz. But still. Does some sort of late-game possibilities here. As we see, uh, Black is actually going to be playing the Centaur, and Ice 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 will be playing that Tiny. So interesting. I wonder how they're going to be uh, laning this, though, because we do have the... Um... Prepare for battle. Wait, where's my... Anyway, I'm expecting this going to be a Centaur uh, Lich offlane, and then to have the... Um... And then to be having the, um... Anyway, Centaur Lich is our offlane, the Tiny Wisp is our mid, and then we're just left with a solo safe lane Viper. HGT going in for a very early gank here, trying to invade the enemy jungle. They're also going to be uh, blocking away the hard camp here, which is pretty common for the Wisp to try and farm up. And FY should be our first blood here with the Chilling Touch going down. They don't have a tether just yet, but he barely gets hurt. himself away before the right clicks go in. And they just didn't have any extra stuns. And HGT will fail to get that first blood. They do a lot of damage to the Wisp, but he'll just run back to base. And that'll be pretty simple for him. So HGT in response, how are they going to be dealing with the dual lane? I'm presuming they're just going to, still going to keep the Death Prophet in the mid and still run with the defensive tri-lane with the Tidehunter. I don't know, you can't actually put the Tidehunter up against the Viper 1v1 in the off lane. So they kind of have to give him some support. I guess that's going to come through the Ancient Apparition. I'm really not convinced that's going to be enough. I feel like VG Gaming have drafted themselves much more superior um, lanes. And that is, in my opinion, the most important part of this whole entire, this whole entire laning phase. Ace. Death Prophet should be pretty good versus the dual lanes, but the issue is not necessarily the um, how Death Prophet is going to do in this matchup. It's more like the fact that the Wisp Tiny should be able to do pretty well, though they are going to be held up by the fact that this camp is blocked out, which is usually how the Wisp really gets uh, the Tiny a lot of extra farm. So his mid presence is kind of disrupted by that fact. We'll see whether or not they some early counters. They do already have a bottle coming up. Bottom lane, they're going to go on Fenrir, and that's going to be your first blood. CSMJ finds the opening here on the Lich. They get exactly what they needed, which was uh, to really crush that dual lane. Because Icy is not going to have a great time here. 1v1 up against the Viper. And any melee is going to suffer, but Tidehunter is anchor smash. Doesn't really help you out. Viper should never get hit by that. And your... Um, your um, Kraken Shell is only going to be able to do so much for you. Don't worry. We caught first blood. We're waking up bit by bit. I said morning in the, the introduction because it is morning for me. So uh, I just came in. Toby had uh, a lot of extra work to do, so I went ahead and came in to cover Cinecup for him. And here we are. I see. Well, he's in melee. I mean, if any engagement... It goes well for the Tide Hunter against the Viper. It's when you round the corner and you're in, you're in melee range of him. Oh no! Tiny Wisp combination ends up popping the Death Prophet here. I said Death Prophet should do pretty well against the, the Death Prophet is one of the better heroes to go up against dual lanes, but still ends up getting caught. Obviously, you can't afford to be caught by the combination, and you need to start try and keep yourself at full health at all times. But Death Prophet just spams out and hitting uh, more than one hero just makes the Crypt Swarm that much more valuable in lane. 
So really thought he should have been able to live through this just fine. You can see the Crypt Swarm already harassing Ice 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 back. Of course, the advantage being that the bottle FY, that's why he's currently trying to tank up creeps, is that he wants to um, use this regen to heal Ice 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 up. So doing what they can. Slark is definitely going to be a very big threat here. Um, they do need to start stacking, though. Have they? Yeah, they, they've already got one stack here. They need to continue this, though, for the Sand King to pick up a fast uh, Blink Dagger. I think that's their greatest hope is going, like, double Blinks on the Slark as well as the, um, the Sand King. If they can get Tidehunter a Blink Dagger as well, he seems to be doing pretty well at this offlane so far. I mean, honestly, he's ahead in CS against a Viper, and he hasn't died yet. Part of this is because he, dry, he brought himself a lot of extra regen and is also um, got himself a really early set of boots, which is really making sure that he's not getting um, harassed overly. But yeah, it's going to be all about the mid-game aggression here for HGT and, and whether or not they can pick off these heroes and keep down the tiny before he gets up that uh, Aghanim Scepter and all his extra farming items. They're going to go for Kaka here. They need to be able to get these teleports in. Kaka going to be tossed back to the west. Nicely played. They still need a little bit of extra damage. So Kaka, one last right click, and they get him. Really need to have teleports on these supports. They can't afford to just let them dive into tier 1 towers like that. It's very, very silly. I mean, especially seeing as they have the extra money here. They've already upgraded the courier. There's nothing else they really need right now. Uh, just having a teleport can do so much against that tiny West duel. And that, that's part of the reason, like, Death Poppy is good versus dual lanes. But you always have to expect that they're going to try and go for a dive. As long as you play your positioning right, that dive should turn detrimental to the enemy team. Like, they shouldn't actually be able to pull off a dive like that and not be punished severely for it. Like, even if they do kill you, you should at least get one kill in return and have control of the lane from there. So, I, I really disagree with the fact that supports do not have those, um, those early teleports. But they are going to try and go for a gank here on Ice Ice Ice. The stun is actually we dodged by the bro strike. Ice 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 is in some serious trouble. Has that extra movement speed though. Right click. They need another one. Kaka trying to get in range. The Crypt Swarm not quite enough. Doesn't quite catch him. And now he's going to turn on to FY. Ice 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 still sticking around. Trying to help out his Wisp. Tether's up in a second. He'll just get himself away. And Ice 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 after a bit of heal from the bottom will now try and turn this one around. And in the bottom lane, they catch out ZSMJ, which is huge. HGT now are just getting really messed up. Is it going to go for Kaka here? Missing the Burrow Strike. Kaka, the Wisp Balls, will finish him off. Ice, Ice, Ice just keeps on rolling through. Now going to go for an apparition as well, diving into the towers. And FY, Ice, Ice, Ice have just almost single-handedly won the game. I mean, the fact that Black and Fenrir got a kill on this Slark is really good for them. I think Rats. But this dual lane is crushing HGT so hard. This could be like a 20-minute GG. From the way this is going, their push scrat, like, it's all about the mid-game here for HGT. But if they end up losing the laning phase so hard like this that they can't actually get a good mid-game, and you have a really farm tiny whisk combination that can not only beat you in team fights but also take down your tier 2s on the side lanes really quickly, this snowball is just going to go so heavily against HGT that heroes like Slark and Death Prophet they do not work at cold parity or being even at behind in gold. Slark especially, man, is, is very much the definition, I feel, of a snowball carry. And he has this point in time where all he really needs is a blink dagger, and he tries to... And he's really powerful for the next 10 minutes. But if you can't actually finish off those supports with one of your combinations... If you're put in danger by just some of these AoE spells... I don't expect how the Slark is going to be able to have the kind of sustain to lay in enough right-click damage to really threaten the enemy team. Nice little block there from Ice Ice Ice. They're going to go into the jungle here, looking for Ancient Apparition. They'll catch him. This is going to be no issue whatsoever. However, he will be stunned up. Fenrir coming in. They do see pretty hot. They do get off the Ravage. Anchor Smash going down. They need to be able to finish off Ice Ice Ice. And Icy comes in at the perfect time. Two-man hoof stop, though. ZSMJ getting low. They need to be able to finish him off. He gets off the ultimate, though. It's going to go for FY. Trying to catch him out. Maybe with the pounce, he can finish him off. He doesn't actually have a pounce up. He went for a split build. And that actually ends up killing him because the Wiz with the Spirits was able to finish him off. FY is dominating. And while Ice 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 may have lost his life for that fight, it's well worth it for Vici Gaming.
Our Lich is soon going to be level 6 as well. The teleport into the middle lane. This is just a level 3 Sand King. The Slark is going to help out a lot, but Kaka leading the charge here is going to be hit by the Avalanche. Also clips Sand King, which means that he will not be able to get in range of the Burrow Strike. That level 1 Burrow Strike is so difficult to work with, it's damn near impossible. And they could have actually blocked out this hard camp, but this ward doesn't block it. And it just shows what they're doing. So they're they're actually going to try and take advantage, and that's because Relocate is already up. They're going to go for the Ancient Apparition here. And what can he do? He's going to try and turn this around, but Black is already here on the other side. They're actually going to go for ZSMJ next, but they don't have enough to catch him. They'll just go right back to the middle lane and continue farming. That kind of aggressive vision. <laughs> and now, like, they see Pretty Hot doing this right now. They're probably going to rotate in and try and put a stop to that. That could be another free kill. Rather big stacking from here as well, Death Prophet. Stacking up the hard camp is something that uh, is very common for the Radiant side Death Prophet. See Ice 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 trying to... Uh, See if you can catch one of those supports. Oh, they know the camp as well. Let's go ahead and pop it. <laughs> this is getting disgusting now. They're, they're just taking not only hero kills everywhere, but now they're taking HGT's recovery farm. They actually managed to somehow get this stack. I... I don't even know what... HGT could do from there. Top tower is under Ultimate going off. It looks like it was just to save the uh, top lane Viper. Who was uh, attempted gank from ZSMJ. Isn't going to be able to catch him out. Ice, 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 and FY. The death squad here. Deep into the enemy jungle. Pretty on's going to stun up with. They do get a double avalanche there. And now Kanka's getting low, but Ice, Ice, Ice doesn't have any follow-up damage. ZSMJ is going to be able to get a secondary kill as Icy joins them. And uh, five heroes here in the middle lane. I mean, when you show yourself for so long there, in that so deep in the enemy side of the jungle, you got to expect some rotation. So FY and Ice, Ice, Ice getting a bit too aggressive and really just too greedy, thinking that they were going to be able to somehow steal that stack. Blink Dagger already up for Black Centaur War Runner. And FY, did he actually relocate just to see if he could steal some of this experience? Because if so, he failed pretty miserably. Maybe he just didn't bring Ice 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 in time or something. And we've been so focused on the tiny Whisk combination that we haven't really looked at some of the other heroes. Look at Super's farm. Look at his CS. In that top left corner. 65 and 9. That's like not missing a single CS. Like you, you 7xing is, is pretty much perfect CS. He's also got another 9 denies. That's incredibly good. Especially since he was ganked up at one point in time. In the middle lane, they do try and put some aggression on Akaka. Won't be able to catch him out. And the funny part is, he's doing that well in CS, and he's actually not that far ahead of his two other cores, who are doing very well because they've gotten kills. All these hero kills. Black and FY will make sure that that ward is denied. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Good awareness from HGT, but they already been caught out enough by the rotations here from the side of Ichi Gaming. That ward was uh, kind of worth it for that. Mid lane, Ravage is going to go off. They're going to try and go for Ice Ice Ice. Anchor Smash, but a beautiful relocate from FY. Will save, and that's now Kaka using his Exorcism. And the end result is really nothing. In fact, you see, with the Lich already here, they're going to return with the Wisp timing. They have no problem trying to go for another team fight here. DSMJ will try and push in the bottom lane, but sure enough, his tier 1 tower will go down. Black was looking for a blink there, but got Radiant's hit by the Crypt Swan before he could blink. And claiming the top tier attack. 1 tower, claiming the middle tier 1 tower, and next up, the bottom tier 1 tower. They've already got themselves a really big gold. The, I mean, when the Wisp is rivaling the Tide Hunter and the Death Prophet for farm, you know you got some serious issues.
So yeah, the, the Wiz Tiny had just given so much room for Black, Centaur, and um, Super's Viper to be able to farm up that they are massively ahead. And it's going to continue in situations like this. Chain Frost bounces out. That was a very optimistic gank there from the two of them. FY, meanwhile, they have to, the try and, HGT have to try and keep up some vision. And quite as obvious because I'm betting Vici Gaming are going to invest in a good amount of cat awards here as their rotations are really what's killing HGT. And if they could just limit the vision from the side of Hyper Glory Radiant team, they'll Spartan just continue to, to find those openings to turn pickoffs into towers. FY bouncing away is uh, ZSMJ is beginning to catch up here. FY, it was going to be such a deep dive. Slark can't possibly go for that. Drums, meanwhile, finished up on Ice Ice Ice. You already had an Ogre Club before that, so Radiant expect a pretty fast agonist, especially attack. at the rate that these towers are beginning to fall. Super already has a mech. Our Centaur can start building into a pipe if he wants to. Uh, he already has his Blink Dagger. At least a Cloak would be nice. You've got a lot of magic damage on the side of HGT. Blink Dagger is almost finished here from the Sand King, but... His last couple hundred gold is going to be tough for him to find, especially with the Wiz Tiny taking over the jungle. Ice, ice, ice. Finds pretty odd. Gets the avalanche nice. toss combination. Oh, and under attack. yeah, that last oh, couple hundred gold now turns into 500 more gold. After that kill, Ice, Ice, Ice looking to catch up with Kaka here. The slight slow from the Ancient Apparition. Ice, Ice, Ice still keeping in pace here. But the Death Prophet, one of the faster heroes in the game. Really surprising. Oh, look at this relocate with the two-man host stop, follow-up double edge, and the stampede on top of it. They kill both the Slark as well as the Tide Hunter, and one very well executed initiation from Black. And there it is, Wiss now ahead of the Slark. Point booster picked up by Kaka. I don't really know what he's going to build with this. This is certainly not a Bloodstone game. My opinion. So. Don't really see how that's going to work out for them. Death Prophet is going to die a bunch and lose all of, all of his charges. They dive into the top lane. Ancient Apparition is guaranteed kill. A ZSMJ with the toss back might be able to get him, but a nice little pounce over the cliff. And he will be able to get himself away. Blink Tigers picked up by the Sand King. They're going to need the most beautiful execution of their life. They don't have the thrust. Never mind. They can't even win the fight. Not without Ice Blast. Like, how? How are they possibly going to do that? I see caught out. Uh, black, a little bit stampede, slow down, body ball him as much as possible. I see still has a ravage, but doesn't want to blow it defensively. Now Kaka comes in with the nice little three men for a strike, but these heroes just aren't taking any damage. Now Chain Frost bounces around, continues to hit the ancient apparition on the side. Super held in place, and with PSMJ as well as Kaka targeting him, he will be able to get that one kill, but it's going to be a cost of both their lives. Burrow strike to the side. Looks like our Sand King's also going to be caught as Sand King toss. Yeah gonna be the wisp balls and hey look at that 16 minute gg before the 20 minute what do you know 5 to 17 and 16 minute gg call and vici gaming continue to steamroll through the chinese scene man holy crap so well played by vici gaming they win this first game in the best of three in the uh upper bracket of the 